why AEW is showing the CM Punk and Jack Perry all in footage on tonight's AEW Dynamite. There's a major change to AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door 3. A new signing will debut imminently on WWE television. And there's an update on Julia's WWE status. Hello and welcome to the Solo Wednesday News here at What Culture Wrestling. Myself, Andrew Pollard. I hope you're well. I hope you're good. I hope you're on the best possible day. Again, mild apologies for the slightly raspy voice. I am getting better, but I went and sat in the cold and the rain to watch the football last night. Wrexham 141, the town they're getting promoted. Come on, the town. Anyway, wrestling talk and more specifically AEW talk and more specifically than that, AEW Dynamite tonight. This being the Dynamite where AEW is going to be showing footage of CM Punk and Jack Perry's altercation backstage at All In last year. Um, this, of course, being the altercation that resulted in the firing with cause of CM Punk and also the removal from all television, AEW television at least, of Jack Perry. Now, Jack Perry, Jungle Boy, the former Jungle Boy, has resurfaced in New Japan Pro Wrestling earlier this year, now a part of the House of Torture, but he's not been seen on AEW programming since All In. Now, the decision to show this this footage tonight is one that's... Um, I don't, even, I don't even want to say if it's split opinion because most people seem to be against it. There's the, even the biggest of AEW fans, some of them are like, Tony, mate, what, what are you doing? Why are you showing this? It's it's footage of somebody that is no longer with the company, who is the biggest star the company's ever had, who is now a massive star in the biggest company in the world. And the other person in the footage is somebody that has not been seen on your TV since All In um, and that you've refused to use um, since then. So it's... <laughs> It, whether you agree with it or not, we're going to be getting this footage tonight. Now, Tony Khan is addressed to Sports Illustrated why he is showing this footage. As Tony put it here, AW is a great track record on delivering what we advertise, and it is real footage. The Young Bucks will show backstage footage from All In, the most important event in AW history, the world record holder for the most tickets ever sold for any wrestling record, over 81,035 total. And it was an important night backstage as well. As for that ticket sold, it's it, that, that's questionable. That, that, that's a little bit questionable, but that's another another topic for another day. Um, this the decision is based on putting on the best show for AEW as well as driving interest for Dynamite and our Dynasty pay per view on April twenty first. This is real life footage that affected many people, and it will air for the first time on TBS during Dynamite. Um, so that's Tony's explanation as to, to why this footage is going to be airing. Uh, essentially, he's driving interest for Dynamite and for Dynasty, uh, and also. A part of this as well is that we've got the uh, the Young Bucks versus FTR at Dynasty for the vacant AW tag team titles. Um, and on that regard, Tony said that there is a good reason why the Young Bucks are showing this video, tying it to that match. Of course, FTR, Dax and Cash are not only the best tag team on the planet, but are very close friends with CM Punk. Um, so if we're going to use this footage, this this fight between CM Punk and Jack Perry to to play into the the you know the rivalry between FTR and the Bucks. I don't, I, again, I just, I don't see any positives coming out of this. Well, there is the positive. There's a clear positive that, yes, this segment tonight will get a strong rating. People will tune in purposely to watch that. Uh, some of us, like like myself here in the UK, may even stay up to watch Dynamite Live at, like, you know, 1 a.m., just put on the hope of like, oh, they're going to open the show with this. They probably won't open the show. Look, they won't open the show with it. But there's that's the intrigue it brings to it. People want to see this. People are massively intrigued to see this so you will get a strong rating for that segment maybe some people will stick around for a bit more of dynamite but after that i just i don't i mentioned it i think it was yesterday or the day before so apologies if i'm going through the same bits but it's just i don't see the the, the wider bigger positives to this i don't see how aw wins regardless of what footage is shown whether it's you know cm punk looks like an absolute idiot and i don't know or maybe he gets embarrassed in this fight or maybe he's that crazed wild man who jumps on jack perry as soon as jack gets backstage and it's all cm punk's fight. what's the benefit of that to aw uh, and i see people saying it's aw's way to put their side of the story across who cares let, let it go it's gone it's i just it's it's opening a wound that didn't need to be open and it's a wound that isn't gonna result in that much of a benefit for your own product focus on that at this time cm punk yes he brought up that the, the topic with ariel hawani well he didn't that's the thing he was asked about it by a journalist and he answered the question and we all know that that what well, we all knew that cm punk was gonna this topic was gonna be brought up in discussion for him at some point down the line and it's happened it's happened now he got asked about it he answered it he gave his side of things but aw there's just i don't know i just i don't it's not a great look to me it's just yeah, but we'll see. We can only judge this on what the footage shows. And the other part of it as well is that this footage is going to be what AEW wants to show you. AEW has this footage. They're not going to show you anything that makes the company look massively bad. Uh, it's, it's So is it going to be a true reflection of what happened 
uh, at all in. Nobody, unless the, apart from the people who were there, are going to know the full details of it. We, I won't, I won't know it. You won't know it. Tony Khan will. CM Punk will. Jack Perry will. Samoa Joe will. But the rest of us, it's yeah, we're going to see AEW's telling of this story, much like we heard CM Punk's telling of the story uh, last week. I just. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just think this is such a, a really daft move. Lots of people comparing it to latter-day WCW. I think that is a little harsh, but it's not a million miles away. Right, moving on to something else, which is supposedly not a million miles away, is the next Forbidden Door event. Now, while AEW has not confirmed this as of yet, reports have stated that, that um, this year's Forbidden Door will be taking place in June, so that's, what, just two months away? Now, and that would follow in the tradition of the past two Forbidden Door shows, which both took place in June. Uh, and the, this this year's Forbidden Door was going to be from New York's Arthur Ashe Stadium, which is a hell of a venue. AEW, of course, has, has run there before. Um, but that has all changed. There is no longer going to be Arthur Ashe Stadium for Forbidden Door. Uh, this was uh, from Andrew Zarian, who was speaking on the, the very first edition of Fight Beyond the Bell uh, podcast, who noted that Forbidden Door is Arthur Ashe is out. It is no longer going to be happening from Arthur Ashe Stadium. Uh, Five lads onto this though that the major, well, seemingly the major reason for this is due to New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling not wanting to split the high production cost of running a venue like Arthur Ashe Stadium. Although New Japan has since denied those reports, but that is what's being reported. Um, there's no word on where Forbidden Door will be taking place this year, though. As At this time, uh, Andrew Zarian did say he's heard some rumblings of a certain location. Uh, did not say what that was, but he did stay outright that it would not be Madison Square Garden for those thinking that maybe uh, somehow AEW and New Japan will be running their MSG. Um, although it's not just uh, AEW and New Japan this year, because reports last month noted that CMLL and Stardom will be a part of this year's Forbidden Door. So, so Forbidden Door's well, shaping up to be, in terms of companies, the biggest uh, event in, in the Forbidden Door history. But the other part of it for me is, I don't know, is it just the name itself, the concept? Is it a Forbidden Door if we see New Japan wrestlers on AEW programming most weeks? No, is it uh, is it a forbidden door when we're seeing CML uh, wrestlers on New Japan? Obviously, that, that's that's uh, sorry on AEW. Obviously, that's uh, cut back a little bit late lately. Uh, but no, it's not. I don't know. Um, and what was it Tony Storm at the weekend saying that the forbidden door is always open? Why is it forbidden then if it's always open? I just yeah, it's it's like anything. The more you do something, the more you um water down the um the uniqueness of it it was great the first forbidden door oh my god AEW, new japan blah 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 blah. this is amazing but when you're seeing those two brands in particular you know uh cross paths on a if not weekly basis a monthly basis fortnightly basis why is it special when it comes to a big pay-per-view yes the match is gonna be great and that is a big thing for uh, a lot of the aw fan base uh, the matches will be brilliant uh i, I mean I, <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and say that, man, I really didn't want to see Brian Danielson versus Kajuji Okada last year. <laughs> well, what, what's the specialness about that? But yeah, anyway, uh, moving away from Forbidden Door and over to WWE and over to... This is something that makes me really, really happy. Uh, of all the, the stories that have come out over WrestleMania week, all the uh, big news stories, all the big topics of conversation, one of the ones I I'm, uh, I'm puts the biggest smile on my face is Jacob Fatu has signed with WWE. Now, this 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 is no breaking news. This was uh, a news that came out uh, over the weekend, really, with Fatu telling people as of Wednesday last week that he signed with WWE. He was subsequently pulled from the GCW show he was supposed to be on on Saturday. Um, and so Fatu has signed with WWE. That's not a news story here. The news story is, this comes from Dave Meltzer on the latest edition of Wrestling Observer Radio, who noted that Fatu will be debuting on WWE TV soon and will receive an immediate push. So that's very promising because in case you haven't guessed, I'm kind of a bit of a fan of Jacob Fatu, and you will be too if you've not seen him before, because the dude is just, just ridiculously talented. Still only 31, one of the best big men in the game. The Samoan Werewolf, a former MLW World Champion, also competed for GCW, for House of Glory, for New Japan. Uh, just this, this like beastly mix of athleticism, power, aggression, intimidation. Uh, Fatu's the man, man. He's um, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens to him on the bigger stage. Now, this this is someone that I first saw in MLW. Jeez, man, would it be 2019 when MLW was running really regularly here in the UK on TV on one of the random channels? I cannot remember, but it was like you had um, there was Fatu, there was Contra, the Contra unit, there was Filthy Tom Lawler, you had MJF and the Dynasty, there was the Heart Foundation, Sammy Callahan was kicking around. 
good old Mansa, Mance Warner, we had Loki, um, LA Park, the Von Erics, Selena De La Renta. It was good times. It was good, good times. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, Fatu's one of those guys where it's like, yeah, somebody take a chance on him. Uh, somebody take a chance on him. WWE have taken a chance on him finally. Uh, and he'll be on TV soon, imminently. That's that's the, the, the report here. If you're not familiar with Jacob Fatu, uh, he is part of the Samoan dynasty. So of course, that is speculation that he would be doing something with the bloodline. Um, realistically, I mean, could we see him on Friday as soon as Friday on SmackDown? I would not rule it out whatsoever. Um, and if you, you worry, well, concern, well, if you're wondering, sorry, about the, the heritage of Fatu, he is the son of the Tonga Kid. The Tonga Kid is the twin brother of Rikishi, which means that Jake Fatu is cousins with the Usos and Souls to Koa. It means he's also related to Roman Reigns, to The Rock, to Yokozuna, to Umaga, to Rosie. To, you get the idea. Um, he is part of that massive, massive family. Uh, and interestingly, over the weekend, he did tweet out a picture uh, or post a picture on X, sorry, um, of, of the Islanders uh, and Bobby Heenan. Now, the Islanders are a tag team of the Tonga Kid, Jake Fatu's father, and Haku. Haku, of course, being the father of Tama Tonga, a Tama Tonga who is believed to have signed with WWE early in the year. So already it's like, OK, so we're going to get Jake Fatu and Tama Tonga as a tag team, which that could be a lot of fun. Um, but either way, whatever they do with Fatu, um, uh, it's got my attention and it should have your attention and if you uh, yeah if, if you're not familiar with him you will be soon and it's he's just a, a really talented dude um, and speaking of really talented people Julia who appeared at NXT stand and deliver over the weekend uh, spotted in the front row with William Regal and the former Stardom co-founder Rossi Ogawa uh, people have been speculating like what, what does this mean for Julia is is she signed what's, what's going to be going on because while WWE has done this well NXT has done this a lot over the years with takeovers where they'd have you know, a new sign in, in, in the front row or appear in the crowd. Say Drew McIntyre was one that, that comes to mind. Asuka was another one that comes to mind. Or, or Kana, as she was billed as at that point in time. Um, it, it doesn't always mean that they've signed with the company. Kota Ibushi being the prime example of that. A, a takeover Dallas in 2016, he was there uh, with Shofunaki, but Kota ultimately did not sign with WWE. Um, fight for reports, though, uh, Julia, yes, she is indeed joining WWE. It doesn't state that she's outright signed yet, but she's made the decision to sign with WWE. Uh, the key figures in this decision are said to be William Regal and Rossi Ogawa, the two people she was um, uh, spotted with at Stand and Deliver. Uh, and, and while she will be finishing up her existing commitments, uh, including helping Rossi Ogawa launch his new promotion, it seems that Julia could realistically maybe debut in NXT at any time because while Rossi returned to Japan on Tuesday, he returned alone and Julia has remained in the US. So read into that what you will. But yeah, Stand and Deliver. It was, it was cool to see her there. I mean, I think a lot of us half expected her to be there. That in, in the build-up to that, there are obviously news reports that, oh, Julie's been spotted getting on the plane to America, although she said she was going to the Himalayas to shave off one eyebrow, which was, that popped me. Uh, but yeah, uh, those of us who watched and Deliver and saw her there, she seemed quite emotional, just with the, the reaction that the crowd gave her. Uh, and on that front, this Fight Forward report notes that she was rushed to the front row under a cloak and was very genuinely, legitimately overwhelmed by the positive response to her uh, from those in attendance, which is always nice to see. Uh, and she was also in attendance at WrestleMania, where she had a performer credentials when you have your little tag of like, hey, da, 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 da. like I have some of these here. These aren't WrestleMania ones, so that's all. But you get the idea, those things that it says, uh, her said performer. So yes, Julia is on her way to WWE, in case you were wondering. Just to wrap things up here with a few questions before my, my voice taps out for the day. Uh, Travis Zachary's got in touch. Hey, Travis. If Cody ever did turn heel, what kind of heel do you see him being? Also, do you think Cena has... Sorry, do you think WWE has seen at him to where he can't turn heel? Um, That's a really interesting question uh, because you the, you can't rule out anybody turning heel. You could literally... Cody Rhodes could turn heel uh, on Friday, on SmackDown. He could turn up on Friday, do something horrible. Be a heel. There we go. It's done. You can turn him heel. Will you turn him heel is, is the other question, because why would you do that with certain people? John Cena, there were times to, to turn John Cena heel. WWE opted not to do that because merchandise, brother, that's that's a big deal. Yes, people do buy merchandise for heels, but if you're someone like John Cena and you've got kids buying every variety, every variation, every color of your T-shirts, your wristbands, headbands, caps, jorts, uh, whatever figures action figures t just yeah if you're doing that and kids are buying so much stuff you turn heel a, a big bulk of that goes away uh, and that's that's merchandise numbers for WWE that's merchandise numbers and money for John Cena that, that he'd be losing out on and that's where somebody else hopefully steps up but again if you're Cena it's like well that person's getting the big percentage of merch now not me because I'm not selling as much so it's um it's it all comes down to business really 
do I rule out Cody Rhodes ever turning heel? I like, you can't you, you can't say that at this stage. You can't rule out anything because Cody's what is he thirty eight? I think I believe so. Plenty of, uh, of life left in Cody Rhodes. Plenty of his, his career left to run. So there could be a heel turn down the line. I mean, we might get to a point with Cody where let, let's remember how hot John Cena was, how popular John Cena was when he, his first his, his rise to prominence. You had that was it WrestleMania twenty the, the US title win the following year winning the world title his first world title and it's like hmm okay uh, th 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 this guy is white hot everybody loves him he's the biggest baby face in the industry nobody's against him nobody's booing him really uh and then that reaction sours so so it is possible cody's at that point now where everybody not everybody because there's always some people but the majority of people absolutely adore cody rhodes he is the baby kissing granny hugging classic baby face who says the right things, who is a little bit cheesy, but walks that line really well of, of being slightly cheesy, but still sounding authentic and genuine and coming across like that. Um, he does all the the work that comes with the top baby face. I don't mean in the ring, I mean away from the ring. I mean all the, the press responsibilities, the media responsibilities, all the, the charity work, all, all the, the meet and greets with kids. All the, just, I mean, in terms of that, you've got just the entrance alone where giving the weight belt out to somebody yeah he ticks all all of those boxes of yeah this this is the guy um so but i mean just to, to look at this the other way then travis and we were to tell him here what sort of heel could he be i mean you just there, there are different routes you can go with it you could literally just go with like the the megalomaniac ego maniac all the success has gone to his head cocky prick heel where like i'm better than all of you look at this look what i've done uh that that's an option there you could have the you know the resentful heel who, who who is sick of people talking about his father and his brother and it's like i am my own person which I, we're not at that point yet but that that, that would, could be a motivation uh, because dusty does come up a lot in this, I, and i think it's great i love to hear dusty rose being talked about on wv tv but that is that is one way you could go if there was gonna be a heel turn um or you could just be i don't know he's sick of somebody else taking his limelight there's so many ways you can go with a heel turn right now i mean <laughs> literally but what Three days away, four days away from uh, Cody Rhodes having one of the most emotional moments in in modern pro wrestling history, closing out a phenomenal night two of WrestleMania. Uh, I think we were all Samantha Irvin on, on that night. How just how good is she, man? So you you've got that. You've got the the, the roar as well on Monday, and already people are like, oh, "When's he going to turn heel?" Soak it in, enjoy the babyface run. It's not often we get a babyface like this who feels so authentic, who is so authentic. So just enjoy the ride for now. A heel turn may come down the line, but that's that's ways off. Uh, Hector Garcia the third's got in touch. Hey Hector, uh, thoughts on anyone that is not currently in the world or universal title or woman's title scene closing out WrestleMania, say five years from now. Maybe Braun, Gunther, Jade, Bianca, MJF, another. Big thanks to you for filling in for the crew and keeping the news rolling. Oh, thanks for that, Hector. Uh, yes, I just on that one, the, the normal crew, normal service will be resumed tomorrow. I believe the lads are landing back, or they may have landed back already from Philadelphia. So you won't be seeing me tomorrow, which some people will say was a good thing. So, um, yeah. Anyway, back to this question. Who can I see that isn't in the, in the title picture right now, headlining the WrestleMania in five years? I mean, the, the first one you named there is, is to me, is nailed on. Bron Breaker is just, yeah, that the sky is the rocket for that guy. Gunther, yeah, you you named some great shouts there. Bron Breaker, Gunther, Jade Cargill, Bianca, MJF. They, they've all got shouts of, of headlining the WrestleMania, especially if you, you class headliners as being, you know, night one or night two. Right now, Jade Cargill is, is a way off in terms of in-ring ability to be in that position, but in terms of sheer persona, star power, presence, A+. Plus, a+. Plus. She, she's there already. If she can get her in-ring game to match that level, then yeah, you've got a WrestleMania main event in there. Bianca Belair has already uh, main evented uh, WrestleMania with, with Sasha Banks in just a brilliant, brilliant match. Uh, so Bianca can easily get back there. You look across the roster, Bron Breaker, Gunther, like you said, MJF. If MJF signs with, with, with WWE, yeah, th there's there's no reason why he can't um, headline the WrestleMania. CM Punk obviously is another one who's not in the title picture right now. Uh, but looking down at NXT, I mean, not even NXT, look at the recent call-ups. Tiffany Stratton, I... That, that that's a that's a special special talent there tiffany stratton she has got all the tools to go it's going to frame from cameron grimes to the moon oh, cameron grimes man what did you do to my boy um but anyway yeah tiffany stratton's an, another one that can go there there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of talent right now in WWE. i mean could you sammy Zayn could could realistically headline a wrestlemania kevin owens 
I don't know. I don't know with that if, if there's, but again, it's all the way, it's how you spin things. You can make anything work realistically. Um, but yeah, I think Sammy, there was a story there with Sammy to be told where I would have liked that he didn't win the, I mean, the IC, that, that IC title match was one of my favorite matches of the weekend from WWE or any of the promotions. Um, Cause it was, oh man, it was a good weekend of just taking in wrestling for like days and days. Uh, Triller plus on, on the, on Triller, just uh that was that there was a lot of time spent on that if you've not seen it as well go out of your way to see mustafa ali an amazing red uh for house of glory and revolver their crossover show on was that on the friday i think it was yeah brilliant um but yes there was a lot of wrestling to take in it was a good time but for me i, I would have liked to have maybe not seen sammy win that match per se but have a bigger story of him going after a world title maybe at next year's wrestlemania maybe against someone like gunther maybe against drew mcintyre drew mcintyre of course somebody he has never beaten so uh, but yeah i've gone around the house there so i'm gonna get to this last question quickly andy mcmahon is going to touch hey andy not to sound heartless but do you think cody will ever be in a storyline where dusty isn't mentioned at least once that ties on to what i was saying before uh, i just feel that cody's name and his stature are big enough now that dusty doesn't need to be mentioned he doesn't need to be mentioned cody rhodes is the biggest star um in professional wrestling right now you could say i mean obviously there is the rock because the rock's technically involved in wrestling no he's gone away now so um, and Roman Reigns is massive, CM Punk is massive, Brian Danielson, John Moxley, uh, Ksuchika Okada. But to me, um, Cody Rhodes is the biggest name in the industry right now, CM Punk. But Cody Rhodes is the answer to that. So yeah, of course, his, his name value, his stature, we don't need to talk about Dusty in to get Cody over to make him feel like a big deal because he is a big deal, the biggest deal in the business. Um, as for for the, the, the constant references to, to Dusty, I don't know that that's not something we you have to go because i mean leading up to this moment of wrestlemania dusty was part of that story that the part of the story again with the story every time with the story but part of the story part of the ride should we say was uh, an element of it was yeah okay cody wants to win that world title okay cody wants to make amends for last year when he came up short against roman reigns who screwed by the bloodline but part of that story is that dusty Rhodes never won this title or this title that traces back through the lineage dusty Rhodes was was essentially robbed of that that belt by superstar Billy Graham in the garden. And and so part of the story is that, yes, Cody is doing this for Dusty. Cody is trying to do what his father could never do, that his father, in some eyes, was was robbed of. So Dusty has to be mentioned in this, this angle, this element of the story, this portion of it. From now, not necessarily. He's done that. He's, he's done what his daddy never could. He's, he's He's got to his big moment to the mountaintop. So, yeah, we don't need to mention Dusty Rhodes every week on TV. But as I mentioned before, and when I hear the name Dusty Rhodes, it puts a smile on my face. It just, there's a lot of good memories there. Um, so I, I don't mind it, but yeah, you don't, not every rivalry has to revolve around it. And when The Rock mentions Dusty Rhodes, that's because genuinely The Rock has talked years ago about Dusty Rhodes being his hero growing up. That was who he wanted to be. But that and so man Rocky Johnson. So that's a legitimate thing now. So say Cody, whatever, whatever feud is next for him, I don't think we'll be hearing about Dusty. Whatever is after that, I don't think we'll be hearing about Dusty. But then there are a, a section of performers, current WWE superstars, who trained under Dusty, who are Dusty's kids. Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. So there's always that tie there, that bond that, that Cody shares with those people because they have that that common uh, common factor of that they shared time with the Dusty, Dusty Rose, the American Dream. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's one where there's just so many people there with ties to Dusty and so many elements of, of Cody's career are tied to dusty but yeah it's something we don't need to hear about from from every single uh, rivalry every single feud and so we'll see how it goes from here with whoever is next with cody Rhodes. um and that is me done now my voice is is failing so i'm gonna get out of here i've been andrew pollard here from the what culture wrestling this has been the solo wednesday news there's another fantastic video somewhere floating around here uh, again the normal lads will be back tomorrow i'll be back as usual on sunday thanks for putting up with me for the, the last few days have a good day the best day possible